It is only 20 kilometers from Guangdong, China to Hainan. Why not build a cross-sea bridge? Can this stump the infrastructure geek? It can be said that the cross-sea bridge has become a bright business card in the field of China's infrastructure construction. They play a vital role in connecting and strengthening economic cooperation between cities. Whether it is the Hong Kong Zhuhai Macau Bridge, the Shanghai Ningbo Corridor, or other cross sea bridges, they all demonstrate China's strong strength and technological advantages in the field of infrastructure. For example, the Hong Kong Zhuhai Macau Bridge is the longest cross sea bridge in the world and has reached the world's leading level in technology. However, even though Guangdong and Hainan are only 20 kilometers apart, no cross-sea bridge has been built. Why? In this video, let us learn more about it. China has successfully climbed mountains, crossed rivers and seas, solved countless problems, and turned natural obstacles into pathways. For example, the Wuhan Yangtze River Bridge, the first road rail Yangtze River Bridge built in 1957, has a highway bridge on the upper level and a double-track railway bridge on the lower level, with a total length of 1,670 meters. Its construction not only brought transportation convenience, but also opened a new chapter in China's bridge construction. Since then, China has built many world-class bridges. For example, the Hong Kong Zhuhai Macau Bridge, which was officially opened to traffic in 2018, is a large scale cross sea channel across the Pearl River estuary connecting Hong Kong, Zhuhai, and Macau. This bridge is the longest cross sea bridge in the world. This bridge not only demonstrates China's strong strength in cross sea bridge construction, but also makes transportation among the three places more convenient. It has injected new vitality into the economy and tourism industry in these areas. The Shenzhen Zhongshan Channel Bridge is located between Shenzhen and Zhongshan, greatly shortening the distance between the two places. These bridges are not only important symbols of China's modernization drive, but also the crystallization of the wisdom and fighting spirit of the Chinese nation. Their construction process was full of hardships and challenges, but with our country's perseverance and superb technology, these problems were solved. With the opening of the Leilin Railway in 2021, China has also made major breakthroughs in the field of bridge construction. The Zhangmu Yarlung Zhangbo River Double Line Extra Large Bridge has also been put into operation. The opening of this railway not only connects Tibet with high speed railways in the mainland, but also opens a new chapter in Tibet's railway network. This bridge is an important part of this railway line. It has attracted much attention for its huge span and high altitude location. It is known as the world's largest and highest railway steel tube concrete arch bridge. The construction of these bridges not only shortens the geographical distance, but also makes people's movement more convenient, strengthens the connections and exchanges between different regions, and brings huge impetus to the economic development of nearby areas. In addition to large bridges, China has also built many small bridges, which facilitate urban transportation and make people's travel easier. China's Guangdong province has abundant resources and strong economic strength, while Hainan province is world famous for its unique tourism resources and superior natural environment. There is a strait between Guangdong and Hainan. The shortest distance between the two is only 19.4 kilometers, but it is precisely because of its existence that Hainan Island can only be reached from the mainland by ship or plane. This transportation limitation has virtually hindered the economic development of Hainan province. The Qiongzhou Strait borders the Bibu Gulf to the west and the northern part of the South China Sea to the east. 
It is one of the three major straits in China, with a maximum width of only 39.5 kilometers. Its geographical location is very important and it is an important transportation artery. During the Spring Festival of 2018, a heavy fog paralyzed traffic in the Qingzhou Strait. It was the peak of return travel during the Spring Festival Golden Week, and tens of thousands of passengers were stranded near the port. The existing modes of transportation to and from Hainan Island mainly include airplanes and ferries. These two methods are particularly susceptible to natural factors such as heavy fog and typhoons, which can lead to traffic disruptions. In order to solve this problem, in fact, as early as the 1970s of the last century, China had already begun studying the construction of a cross-sea bridge or tunnel between Laizhou Peninsula and Hainan Island to connect the two sides. In the 1980s, Hainan separated from Guangdong and established a special economic zone. This led to the construction schedule of this passage being proposed again, and in 2003, a passage was officially opened to traffic. However, this channel is crossed by train and ferry, which makes transporting bulk goods very troublesome. It requires the time-consuming and laborious process of dismantling the train into carriages, transporting them to the seaport, splicing them, and loading them onto ships. In 1994, in order to develop the western Guangdong region, Guangdong province began to discuss the feasibility of building a cross-sea passage. By 2009, the construction plan and project planning had even been initially determined. At that time, many media asserted that the project would start in 2012 and be completed by 2020. However, the main person in charge of the project subsequently stated that the construction plan for the Qiongzhou Strait Channel was still controversial. Since then, the debate over whether to build a bridge or a tunnel when building the Qiongzhou Strait Cross Sea Channel has never stopped, and during the discussion everyone unanimously called it the Qiongzhou Strait Cross Sea Channel. Because it is not sure whether to use the Cross Sea Bridge method or the Channel Tunnel method. Compared with the Qiongzhou Strait Cross Sea Channel, the construction of submarine channels in other parts of the country has made significant progress. For example, the Xiamen Xiangen undersea tunnel has been completed and open to traffic, but although the construction of the Qiongzhou Strait Cross Sea Channel has been delayed, it has not yet started. However, relevant departments still attach great importance to the project and have been actively promoting it. In other words, although China leads the world in technical strength in construction, building a channel across the Qiongzhou Strait still faces huge challenges. Some media reported that the chief engineer of the Hong Kong Zhuhai Macau Bridge believes that building a bridge across the Qiongzhou Strait is extremely difficult, even more difficult than the Hong Kong Zhuhai Macau Bridge. The average water depth of this strait is 44 meters, and the maximum depth reaches 114 meters, which is actually not too high. But the Qiongzhou Strait is an important shipping channel, and ships often pass through it. Therefore, if a bridge is to be built, it cannot affect the normal passage of ships. This requires special pier or tunnel design to span. According to the navigation scale of 300,000-ton cruise ships, the clearance height of the navigation bridge should reach 62 to 75 meters. To ensure safety, a clearance height of 80 meters is generally selected. Coupled with the height of the water depth, it means that the height of the bridge piers alone will exceed 100 meters. This height means that not only will the construction materials increase a lot, but the engineering design and construction process will be more complex and the risks will be greater. 
The existence of these factors has led to an astonishing amount of investment in the construction of the Qiongzhou Strait Channel. Therefore, economic factors are also an important consideration in whether to build a cross-sea bridge. The investment required to build a bridge may reach hundreds or even hundreds of billions. If return on investment and economic benefits cannot be guaranteed, who will bear the losses? Moreover, maintaining and managing the bridge is also a huge task. Of course, if it really needs to be repaired, it can definitely be done. Even if there is no money, it can be financed like when the Three Gorges was built. However, you can still reach Hainan by ferry and airplane. Although these methods are not as convenient as land transportation, they can already meet the travel needs of most people. Therefore, if a cross-sea bridge is to be built, the traffic demand must at least be able to support the operation and maintenance costs of the bridge. And the most important thing is that the technical and engineering problems have not yet been solved. The complex geological conditions are also one of the important reasons restricting the construction of the Qiongzhou Strait cross-sea channel. The Qiongzhou Strait is located just at the southwest end of the seismic zone along the southeastern coast of China. The nearby area is seismically active, with moderate to strong earthquakes occurring on Hainan Island and its offshore areas once every few decades on average. This earthquake-prone environment is a huge challenge for building cross-sea passages. A major earthquake with a magnitude of 7.5 occurred near the Qiongzhou Strait. The earthquake directly caused the land in the area to subside by an average of 3 to 4 meters. Such seismic activity brings huge uncertainties and risks to the construction and use of cross-sea passages, and poses huge challenges to the construction and use of cross-sea passages. Typhoons are also a major problem in the construction of the Qiongzhou Strait cross-sea channel. From June to November every year, this sea area is a key area hit by typhoons. Strong typhoons and super-typhoons occur frequently, which brings huge risks to the construction and operation of the channel. For example, in 2014, the Qiongzhou Strait was hit by Super Typhoon Ramesson with wind power reaching level 17. It is worth mentioning that the Hong Kong Zhuhai Macau Bridge built in China can withstand maximum wind force of level 16, which is considered the most advanced level in the world. Therefore, if you want to build a cross sea channel, you need to take more effective measures to resist the attack of typhoons. If we build a straight tunnel instead of a bridge, it will be very technically difficult. For example, there are three fault zones in the Qiongzhou Strait area. And it is understood that the maximum depth of immersed tubes can reach 110 meters, and the depth of the immersed tubes of the Hong Kong Zhuhai Macau Bridge is only about 48 meters. There are currently two main construction methods for tunnel construction. One is the blasting method, which uses explosive blasting to dig tunnels. This method is low cost and easy to use. And China has used this method to successfully build multiple undersea tunnels, such as the Xiangen Tunnel. However, this method is not applicable to the seabed of the Qiongzhou Strait. Another method can only be used, which is a shield machine. However, complex geological conditions make undersea tunnels face huge challenges. There are not only obvious geological activities here. Moreover, it is not a complete continental shelf, and the tunnel must cross the trench, which further increases the difficulty of construction. If disasters such as earthquakes and ground fissures occur, it is likely that the Earth's crust will be pulled and squeezed by the fault zone, which will affect the tunnel and even cause fractures, causing landslides. Therefore, during the design and construction of cross-sea passages, 
the distribution and activity of fault zones must be fully considered, and corresponding protective measures must be taken to ensure the stability and safety of the tunnel. But this is a huge technical problem for the construction of cross-sea passages, and our technical level has not yet reached the level to overcome these challenges. An undersea tunnel built by China in 2018 has a maximum depth of 88 meters below sea level and a total length of approximately 8.1 kilometers. Compared with the Qiongzhou Strait Cross Sea Channel, there is obviously a huge gap in the scale and technical difficulty of this tunnel. Moreover, in the current debate about building bridges and tunnels, neither side has been able to produce scientific and reliable arguments to refute the other side or convince the public. However, the Qiongzhou Strait Cross Sea Passage is of extremely important significance to both individuals and the country. In addition, China attaches great importance to infrastructure construction, so this channel will definitely be built. And once the Qiongzhou Strait Cross Sea Channel is completed, it will inject new impetus into Hainan's economic development. It will make the exchanges between people from both sides of the Taiwan Strait more convenient, make it easier to travel, sightseeing, and vacation in Hainan, and promote the vigorous development of the tourism industry. This will enable Hainan's resources and markets to more fully interact and communicate with the mainland and other countries, and accelerate Hainan's opening up process. With the advancement and innovation of science and technology, the construction technology of China's cross-sea bridges or tunnels is still improving. I believe that we can jointly overcome technical problems in the future. Build a stable, safe, and efficient channel across the Taiwan Strait to achieve convenient interconnection across the Taiwan Strait. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to our channel for more great content. See you next time.